What's up YouTube and welcome back for another episode of Homebrew Subaru. In this episode I'm going to start diagnosis on my wagon. Uh, it was probably six weeks ago, something like that, that I uh, took a corner extra hard, pinned red line for a little while, and had some engine noise after that happened. Uh, this is my boosted NA Impreza. It's uh, been quite reliable over the years. This is the second, the second engine that I've boosted with this setup. Uh, so I, I got a feeling we're gonna go with version three. So as it stands right now, the engine has noise. It, now that I've run it again, it, it does sound like it's a bottom end bearing, like it's a rod knock. Um, but I, I couldn't see any more oil coming out of the breathers, which is what was happening before. And I really haven't driven it at all. The car sat out on the road and I actually had to boost the battery to get it in here. So now that I got the car inside, I'm going to go about doing a compression test to start with. I'm not so sure it's going to actually show me anything wrong with the car, but it always might. And it, at least if it points at a cylinder for me, then uh, I might go ahead at that point and just do a leak down test to see how much low by there may be if it's a cracked piston or something like that uh, the noise is really strange but the car seems to run on all four cylinders still and uh, it runs pretty smooth to be honest now with that said I know I caught this noise real early I mean I pretty much just drove down the street lightly as soon as I heard it and got the car back here so it, it could just be the beginning of the bearing failing and uh, or something else so not really any damage should have actually happened to anything else in the engine it could be saveable I might be able to you know actually reuse it in the future the bottom end anyway but the long-term plan here is if I am gonna be redoing this motor um, I'll be using Tyler's old block with a new set of pistons in it and pulling the cylinder heads from this motor cleaning them up a little bit and then mounting them onto that block and putting that setup back into this car running it with the mechanical turbo setup that I have in the car uh, with the thoughts of well possible engine management in the future now I'm just about to put the compression tester on uh, but I've just pulled the four spark plugs and so this is how they would sit in the engine Pointing forward, one, three, two, four. Number four's got oil, it looks like. It's definitely damp. So now I'm really expecting the compression test to show me something. I'll just go ahead and unplug the ignition coil. Now during this compression test, I've actually had number four fuel injector unplugged to ensure there's absolutely no fuel going into that cylinder. Uh, I got a feeling it's going to be lower than the others, but I just want to give it that chance before cranking to actually reach the same compression as the other cylinders. We got a major problem with number four. <laughs> so number four has hit 50 PSI after extended cranking. So I would say the exact same thing that happened to Tyler has happened to me. And number four piston is probably cracked. And being an NA motor with NA pistons, I mean that's that's probably what the noise is being created from that that piston 
is actually severely cracked. Um, and who really knows until I get it apart to, to exactly what I'll find, right? Now for chits and giggles, we're just going to go ahead and do a leak down on number four. See if I can get some oil spurting out of these vents or something. I'm uh, just thinking, it, you know, even possibility of the blocks cracked, the cylinder walls taking a crack. Uh, but most likely the piston is because the EJ251s are kind of known as having a glass piston for boost reasons. Like you're not really supposed to boost them. And I guess lots of people have had the failures of cracked pistons in them. Um, I get quite a few boosted miles on this thing. But uh, it was a pricey motor from the scrapyard when I bought it. And uh, I'm just hoping that I can salvage these cylinder heads. I think we're at getting close to top dead center on number four. You can actually hear pressure coming out of here. I'm sure the mic can pick up, pick that up because it's just huffing out of there. But if I put my hand over the oil filler. You can see the bubbling and gurgling coming out of that that valve cover vent over there. So yeah, number four is definitely damaged. So I'm kind of in disbelief that I've suffered the exact same failure that Tyler did, but anything's possible. I've seen lots of stuff. Cylinder four, you know, is quoted on the internet of being the one that always fails. Uh, but this setup is completely different from an STI. I mean, it's similar to an STI, but nothing is the same. But I've definitely gone ahead and done the right thing in, in thinking that I was going to need a short block and getting prepared to sit that STI block onto the engine stand. And I've got to pop the pistons. There's two more pistons left in it. I've got to pop those out and get ready to put in the other pistons. I'm hoping I can get into that this week. I've been really busy this weekend. I took on a couple other jobs that I probably shouldn't have, but it was uh, a little bit of quick extra cash that I could make so that I can start ordering all the extra pieces I need for the RB swap. Uh, and then I've gone ahead, I basically did a bunch of yard work today. I've swept out the whole shop or my garage. I always call it my shop. Um, but I mean, there's dust still everywhere and I really want to get everything cleaned up before I sit that block out and start working with it uh, so definitely another cleaning gotta get rid of some cardboard and garbage but hopefully that will be the next video i'll actually sit the uh the block onto the stand and, and at least start prepping it uh, i've got a couple other pieces to do on it the oil pan needs to be resealed on it and uh, i'll get that prepared because uh, i'll probably push this out just in case i need to bring something else in but then once this car comes in it'll stay in until it's finished um, so yeah a lot of work ahead of me again and uh, I might not show as much as I usually do because I kinda just wanna get through this as quickly as possible so that I can start driving it again the RB swap in the 240 will be a lot more detailed um, but I'll show some of the highlights of this and probably lots of time-lapse footage so yeah the channels getting even closer to 1k now uh, we're basically counting down the hundred last people and right, I think I checked it earlier this morning, we were at 910. Uh, so yeah, 90 more people to 1K. I do plan on having 1K giveaway. Um, so, you know, if you know anyone that wants to get in on it, tell them to subscribe now so they don't miss it. And uh, hopefully I can just continue to grow the channel past 1K and, and make it bigger than what it is. Got lots of content and uh, I just got to keep on working to keep up with the work. And I've got other things I'm doing in the backyard as well, so um, I'm always busy. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button for me. Leave your questions and comments further down below. And I'll see you in the next one.